CES hasn't even officially started yet, and I'm already kind of up to my neck in peculiar phones. There was the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite, the S10 Lite that we saw before, and now we're taking a look at this, the OnePlus Concept One, which is, for the most part, the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren, just given a new body and a couple extra tricks. Let's take a closer look. Now this is about as odd a situation as I've been a part of so far. We're in a room with these concept phones and a guy playing a piano made out of one plus sixes or something. I don't know, but it's he's having a great time. So who am I to take that from him? I'm having a great time too because this is a really interesting device. It supposedly represents the purest expression of what one plus is and design is all about. And in this case, that really just means you can't see the cameras. Those earlier reports were true. The OnePlus Concept One uses a very thin layer of what's called electrochromic glass. And when a current runs through these multiple layers of glass and substrates, it basically just means that this black glass opens up to allow you to take photos with the cameras that are hidden underneath it, which is decently cool. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, because it's probably what I was thinking before I stepped into this room. Why? does this exist? Why does a phone need to do this? I've personally never had a problem using or reviewing phones that have many, many cameras wedged into the back, but some people do. There is that weird phobia where people just don't like the way holes look in things, and there is an argument to be made that having five or six, however many cameras really, stuck right back here, maybe doesn't look that great. So, fine, OnePlus, you win this round, I suppose. There are some really interesting concrete benefits to an approach like this, though. For example, you can sort of use this transparency change in glass as kind of an ND filter, a neutral density filter, which kind of allows you to control the amount of light entering the phone's camera. So, it's not unlike fiddling with the shutter speed, except you still get to do that too. You don't have to worry about the ISO, it just kind of changes what you're seeing so it gives you a little bit more control. Whether or not that's something you really want out of a camera is kind of up to you. I personally didn't think I ever needed it, but it's an option, and that's kind of what OnePlus is all about. I will say though, for video people like Dan behind the camera there, they're used to cameras with variable ND that might make or break a phone like this for you. Now, we're not exactly sure when this kind of technology will wind up in a full consumer-ready OnePlus phone. The company has said that it is moving to put this in devices you can actually buy, but this requires a lot of durability testing. We're not quite there yet. We haven't really sorted out the impact of embracing something like this on such a large scale. So it'll be a while before you actually get to play with something like the OnePlus Concept One on your own, or for that matter, be able to go out and buy one. But I'm warming up to this concept a little quicker than I thought I would. It seemed a little bit silly. It seemed like, well, hey, we've got some people, let's throw them at a problem that isn't really a problem. But the more I use this thing and the more I talk to people about it, the more it kind of seems like OnePlus has a point. Maybe not the most valuable point for everybody, but it's a point. I'm gonna keep playing with this thing, but in the meantime, thanks for watching and be sure to keep a lockdown on Gadget for more coverage from CES 2020.